Oops. Let me flip that camera. There we are. My bad. Welcome, everybody. Clone Questions Live, Episode 4. Let's see here. Let me pin this. Welcome to Clone Questions Live, Episode 4. We are live on uh, Instagram. I'm on Riverside FM, and I should, it should stream to YouTube live as well, but I think there might be a glitch or i got to reset something. But uh, welcome to everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Clone Coach Team. Let us know where you're joining in from. That's number one. Let's make that a, um, you know, the, the normal thing to do. When you join, let us know where you're joining in from. I see someone saying aloha. Maybe they're from Hawaii, you know? Let's see here. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Bomb Squad THC. Howdy, howdy. Hey, from Germany. What's up, everybody? We got Vermont, Bozeman. We got Maine, Germany, Mississippi, Philadelphia. Another Maine. I love it. Let us know where you guys are from. Check out the uh, pinned comment there for some discount codes. Um, Mexico, Canada, Detroit, Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. There's a place called Paul's Valley. We got LA, we got Colorado, New York, Roseville, Roseville, cut. Chicago, Northern Germany. We got a couple Germanies. Let's see here. I'm going to start this clone questions live with a little story. Um, a little case study, what's been happening with one of my coaching clients this week. They weren't getting roots. They were not getting roots. We're diving through every possibility. We're making sure that they're following all the SOPs, all the parameters, all the temperature set points. Um, you know, they're missing some root inoculants and stuff. So, we you know, we found what's available to them to introduce. But, you know, we were just racking our heads because they, they weren't getting results. And, you know, it's really really odd when someone just gets zero results that's like such an anomaly right and we once again we ensured we covered all of our bases um the watering protocols the temperature the water temperature uh, and the procedures the products you know make sure you know the gel wasn't too cold or stored in the fridge and like used right away things like that um but long story short they were in rockwool and you know i wrote the sops when i was in rockwool so rockwool works with the sops too um, but I was like, look, why don't we just switch up your media just to, you know, address that variable. And, um, we did that. We switched to a cocoa peat based media. And in the meantime, he called the, uh, manufacturer, he called Grodan and was picking their brains saying, Hey, what's going on with, uh, with my cubes here. And what they told him was that there's actually a recall on the AOKs on those cubes that he was using. There was a manufacturing recall. So something was up with the cubes. I think he said the media was too dense or something like that. You know, if that was the case, maybe then those air pockets weren't there to have that right oxygen to moisture ratio in that cube. That's really ideal for rooting. Um, maybe it was just no oxygen pockets. So it's just bogging down the, the stem and not allowing any kind of callusing, striking, rooting. Um, but we switched that out and boom, you know, he had all green stems, all green leaves, full roots in seven days, eight days. He's right on track. He's like, oh, we're, this is, this is money. All the results that we were expecting to receive and you should expect to receive when running the best clones ever SOP, um, was happening right back on schedule. And, you know, hundred percent success, like everything he was doing was right. The moms are healthy. The procedures are right. The products are right. The staff was doing what they were doing. The room was set as where it was at, um, what it was supposed to be at. But at the end of the day, this weird anomaly, this weird variable, just happened to be the grow dance are going through a recall. <laughs> we changed that variable, and he got all the success that we're looking for. Um, so the the lesson in that is just to you know triple check everything, call the manufacturers. You know sometimes there's inconsistencies in some of these products and stuff. So you know that's just a part of a part of life, a part of what what happens. And in this case, that's what it was. And we solved that, got him switched to some other cubes. He's rocking right on track, fuzziest, whitest roots, greenest stems, healthiest clones, vigorous, all of it. So just a little lesson there for everybody. Um, but once again, if you're just joining, let us know where you're joining in from. 
And if you got something to spark up, I think now's the time. I got a microphone here, so FYI, everybody, I uh, I upload the full episodes of Clone Questions Live on my YouTube channel, so you could go browse that uh, on my YouTube channel and you know pick through the video, uh, just in case you can't stay for the whole thing or you missed it or anything like that. Um, so if you want to catch the full episodes of Clone Questions Live, go to my YouTube channel. It's just search Clone Coach. Luckily enough, that's uh, Clone Coach was not taken in any of these social platforms, so I'm swooping them all up. <laughs> but cheers, guys. Happy Friday. Let me keep scrolling through these comments here, get to some questions, and see where people are coming in from. We got Mendo, we got Oklahoma, Minnesota, Hawaii, Lazaret, Albania. Interesting. Look at that. See what else we got. Are we are we cloning cards in this forum or animals? Uh, we're cloning cannabis in this form. I got roots in the AOK -okay cubes. Yeah, I mean you should be able to. Um, like I said, his particular batch was going through a recall, so maybe your batch wasn't. It should work. There's no issue. There's nothing wrong with running AOK -okay cubes. Um, you know, they always tend to have a little bit more moisture retention or seem like they do. But once you get beyond that point, you're you're good. But let us know where you're joining in from, everybody. Here's a question. Man for Dem. From the Caribbean. Nice. Uh, any substitute for Zerotol? So, Zerotol is a commercial product. So if you really want to have a one-to-one -one substitute, you got to go to a, you know, hydroponic supplier and find yourself a commercial product that um, has some of the same chemistry, which is like an H2O2 and parasitic acid-based chemistry. Um, that's an oxidizer that's used as and labeled as a fungicide, algicide, um, and bactericide, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you could, if you're on a hobby level, there's more options. You could go, you know, H2O2. Um, anywhere from three to thirty percent, um, you know, dilute that uh, accordingly. Um, you could, you know, for plants, you know, you could you could do that. Um, you got to be careful with some other products that are listed um, that aren't listed as fungicides because xerotol is a fungicide. So make sure it's an actual fungicide and not just like a, you know, line cleaner or something like that. Here's another one. How do you deal with hollow stems? It's a good question. I usually see the hollow stems on seedlings for sure, or you know, on the on the main mare stem growth. Um, usually, that main stock, that main stem, is usually pretty pretty hollow for whatever reason on seedlings. Um, but when you're experiencing that on a normal mother plant. What I've usually seen, it's it's usually in that main stem as well. So if you're topping and pruning that plant, it's less likely to see it. Um, but, you know, just try to ensure you have all the proper uptake um, of, you know, the calcium and your NPK and um, your root zone and stuff. I don't really know how to deal with it besides upping you know, the calcium to really fill in those cell walls and fill in that gap. Um, beyond that, you know, it's... It's more susceptible, I think, you know, to certain pathogens if you start cloning it and every single stem is like that. But once again, in my experience, not every single top is going to have that hollow stem. Um, usually if you're pruning and topping your mother plant, it, it goes away. It's usually on the main, the main stem. So we got Michigan, Oklahoma. Joining Clone Questions Live, Episode 4. Seattle, Florida. I was actually born in Florida. Down in Hialeah. We got Hilo, Hawaii. Are you talking about cleaning cards or marijuana from Florida? I'm catching up on the comments here, guys. Let me just keep scrolling through. We got Upstate New York. Here's a question from Vermont Grower. How would you convert a 2x3 tent into a nursery multi-tiered with more than one dome yeah if you're uh in a two by three 
I assume you got like five, six feet of height, um, ideally. And yeah, you want to go vertical with it. You want to, um, you know, get as many layers of square footage as you can in there. And I would have a little section, probably half of that, 50% of that is going to be your mom stock. Um, nice little small mom plant with some space to grow into and your light. And then beneath that, you'll have probably one dome um, and maybe a third level where you have like your preteen stuff um, as well. So you can make a tiny little thing, do it, you know, tray, shoot for a tray at a time and uh, you can make something happen. Got to start somewhere. See, we got a uh, Oakland H town says the goat. Let's see here. Definitely have more moisture retention and don't have to water till day 10. Yeah, that's, that usually seems to be the uh, consensus with the Rockwell Cubes. But if you're joining, guys, let us know where you're joining in from. I'm scrolling through these comments here. Um, so I'm a little bit behind, but let me scroll through here. Let's see what we got. Cloning plants in later weeks of flower, week six. How long would you normally expect to see roots? Growing in Rockwell, hope this isn't a bad batch. Take your cuts sooner, um, you know, ideally if you can, but if you're, if you can't and you're flowering, you're taking cuts in week six, um, roots should come in, you know, 10 days, right? Seven to 10, 12 days. You should get roots, whether the rest of the plant is ready or not. Uh, you know, that's a little bit up for what to expect with, you know, cloning from week six, but, um, you should have roots in two weeks. No problem. Um, it being a, a stem from flower doesn't hinder um, the rooting process, really. It's a question. You ever use Manuka honey as a rooting hormone or cinnamon in the soil for its antimicrobial properties? I have not, but I've been doing a lot of research on these natural ingredients lately. Actually, it's in my notes here. Um, with honey, with cinnamon with uh, willow bark extract, with um, some other options like that, some, some organic options and, you know, things that have, um, things that have natural hormones, the auxins in them. And like you said, things like cinnamon that are antimicrobial. Welcome everybody that's just joining us. Let's see, we're going through these questions here in the chat. Had a, had a weird problem. Lifted the tray on my aeroponic and had a couple stems out of 120 clones create a white gel-like substance in the tips. Hmm. White gel-like substance. Would it be like mold and fuzz that's like watered down so it's kind of like gel type? Or is it, I would have, you know, I'd have to kind of see it to, to see what's going on. Is there any other... Uh, signs of pathogen pressure is a stem rotted is a stem soggy um what's unique about these few stems out of the 120 different mom there's a lot of variables so if it's a if there's one-off things that happen you have to look up look out for those one-off variables that could happen if that makes sense bonfire cbd what's up what's going on What does purple stripes and dark green leaves mean if the plant and roots look healthy? Well, if you have dark green leaves and purple stems, why would you say the plant looks healthy? That, and for veg, if we're assuming it's for veg, that's not healthy. Well, I guess healthy would be like rigid and, you know, perky and whatnot. Um, and the roots there. You just have the wrong balance of nutrients. Um, you know, with all the rate, with all the parameters involved, with your light intensity, with your CO2, with your watering, with your light temp, with your temperature in the room, humidity, genetics. Um, there's some things that would make it make a plant have some purple and still be healthy. But um, I think you got to just, you know, balance out your veg nutrients, get some more nitrogen pump in, get the ratio of light to air to CO2 to temperature all kind of balanced, balanced in. See, what kind of plant testing services is there at your website? I'm interested. So at uh, MyFloraDNA is the website. You can use my discount code, CloneCoach. They have all kinds of uh, plant service 
testing services. So um, from hoplite and viroid to a DNA to um, the sex of the plant um, and all the other pathogens, fusarium, things like that. So go to MyFloraDNA, use discount code CloneCoach um, for all your plant testing services needs. We got a Lansing, Michigan. Scrape stem or don't? Good question. Do not. Do not so that you reduce, do not scrape your stem so that you reduce the amount, the amount of open wounds on your stem because every single open wound is susceptible to pathogen, pathogens entering that open wound. So stop scraping just to stay on top of reducing the amount of um, open wounds that could be attacked by pathogens. See here, got a question. How do you deal with hollow stems? I feel like it's directly affecting my clone success rate. It shouldn't be the only thing affecting your success rate. Um, like I touched on earlier, you let's look at your mother plant. If every single top is hollow, um, you know you're gonna look at your lights, the light intensity, the the moisture uptake and the nutrient uptake. So start measuring your EC input and your um, runoff to see how much EC is being uptaked along with how much moisture or water your plant is uptaking as well. So look at those two facts, up your, your calcium, get those stems nice and full. Um, and following good procedures, you shouldn't have no issues either way. Um, that shouldn't be the reason, sole reason why you're having rooting issues. So we got Sacramento, NorCal, another Maine, Arizona, Boston, Texas, slash New Mexico. Let us know where you're joining in from, everybody, on this episode of Clone Questions Live, episode four. Get this lighter here. And if you're puffing on something, let us all, let us all know what you're puffing on when you're puffing on this Friday. Vermont grower, follow-up question for that nursery question. Let's see here. Interesting answer. Now, if we can ex if we can expand that to two two by fours, and one two by three, good lights, and one to flower in one of the two by fours. If you're gonna run a nursery, stick with the nursery, bro. That's just my opinion. If you're gonna have a little side business, a little side hustle going, um, which I highly encourage you do because there's great margin in the nursery um, side of cultivation. Even at a small scale, dude, you could start paying some of your bills this way. Um, so I would stick to you know your two two by fours, having your mother plants in there, and your one two by three with a full you know rack of how many levels you could fit, and start stacking you know three or four domes in there, and start doing you know one to two hundred clones at a time. And you're in Vermont, I assume a clone will go for 10 or 20 bucks. So you do the math, my friend, every two weeks. Highly encourage people to get side hustles, side jobs. You know, turn a, turn a spare bedroom into something, you know. Highly encourage that. We got my Vermont growers on some mimosa. The House of Green says, I've used honey and cinnamon. Both work well. Nice. Extraordinary gentlemen. I heard willow was better than aloe. That was the other ingredient. Um, it might be better, but, you know, why not use both, you know? If you're just joining, let us know where you're joining in from. Let us know some questions doesn't have to be like, hey, fix my problem. I mean, you want to talk, you know, nursery sales, nursery operations, managing staff, um, you know, doing big production nursery stuff, logistics of nursery, you know, moving plants up and down the state. Um, you know, anything, man. This is this is up to you guys, what you guys want to hear, what you guys want to learn more about. William 
Samala, any input on slow nickels methods? No, no input. Let's see here. Is it safe to cut clones when the stem are purple? Sure, it's safe. You could still get something to root, but that purple clone that you cut, that is the best it could possibly look moving forward. So if it's not starting out looking really good, that's the best you're going to get, period. And if you don't have a good process, you'll probably go down in that root health up top. In the stem health, right? More purple, more stunted growth, yellow leaves, um, you know, that real purple, you know, tight in and out spacing where it's just not stretching and developing. Um, so it's safe, but will you get quality? Mm. El Jefe, good evening, sir. Hope you're well. Tried to give you a little wave there. Isn't dark leaves caused by nitrogen? Depends what kind of dark leaf we're talking about and what other characteristics that that plant is showing. So, if you know you're feeding excess nitrogen or a high level of nitrogen and your flat fan leaves are dark green and the fan leaves are starting to curl at the tip and the edges, you start combining a few things and you could probably say, yeah, this is because of nitrogen. Um, but it's not like a hundred percent like, oh, the leaf is dark. You know, it's a nitrogen issue. Um, yeah, nitrogen equals green when it comes to generally speaking with fertilizers and plants. Um, but it, it depends on the level, whether it's, it's an issue or not. Let's see, I, I, can I use a light with no growing properties over the domes and get the same results? Use a a um, a simple fluorescent bulb or LED bulb that's like a two foot or four foot you know strip light, cool blue spectrum. If you want just a general uh, type of light for you know non growing purposes, get a cool blue spectrum. All the bulbs will tell you what spectrum they are, what color they lean towards. Um, so go for cool blue, and you should have no problem. We got Vegas in the house. Let's see here. What's in that cup? <laughs> I'm boring, dude. Guess. Guess what's in, guess what's in the cup? If anybody could guess right, you get a you get a free uh free SOPs, bro. You get free SOPs if you guess right. There's 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 two things in my cup to to help you guys out. Not including the ice. There's two things in my cup. You can figure it out. You get a free SOP. Clones and mother plants. Let's see here. Woodland Hills. Nice. Wild Bill Cody Grower says, Thank you, Clone Coach. One other question. Do you have form of nitrogen that you prefer to use when fertilizing unrooted clones? No, I don't have like a, a preferred fertilizer type or source um, when it comes to unrooted clones. Excuse me. Um, whatever the your, your base veg, vegetative nutrients are running, use the same thing. That you can't really go wrong. Use the same thing. As long as your mother plants are healthy, with, healthy and ha happy with what they're being fed, you should have no problems. We got somebody, uh, we got Tyler Garrett Official smoking on some rainbow belts. One Up Mush V Room says, how important is CO2 inside of a clone room? Good question. Instead of just a clone room itself, just domes, clones, it's not important. Ambient CO2 of about 400 that you'll get with normal fresh air, air exchange um, and like people being in the room and stuff is all the CO2 you need at that point. When you go into a vegetative state and you're intensifying the lights and your irrigation schedule and stuff, you want to start building off of that, um, that normal level that's in the room, that base, which is roughly about 400 PPM. 
It's kind of what's just, it's just in normal air. So you want to start upping that um, one or 200 points at a time as you get the plant to go bigger. So you're smoking on some berry punch. Black sugar cheese. Ooh. It's funny how these like random names like sound enticing, right? When, they, when it comes to weed strains. From Alaska, BHBSB5. Got a question. Let's see. Can you safely cut good, healthy clones when the stem is purple? I think I touched on that earlier, but yes, you could cut them. You could root them, but you're not going to get that plant to look any better than it did from the day you cut it. So if it's purple going in, if it's stunted growth going in, if it's underdeveloped nodes going in, um, yellowing leaves, that's the best it could possibly look. It could only get worse from that if you don't have the right procedures. So... I would say first things first, your plants and veg do not need to be purple. They do not. Shouldn't be a purple room when you walk into your bedroom. It should be green. It's green stems, green fan leaves. That's what I want visually when I walk into a room. Last place I was managing, you'd walk into the bedroom and it was purple. You just looked across the room and see solid purple stems. It was just purple, dark, right? No, that's not what we need, right? So we adjusted things so that my room visually couldn't be, you know, denied. Those were green plants. So first things first, maybe check out the mother plant SOP that I have on clonecoach.com. And you get your mothers, mothers where they need to be. Vermont, thank you so much for the advice and answers. My, my pleasure, man. Thank you for, for joining Clone Questions Live with me. Let's see here. And once again, everybody, if anybody could guess what I'm sipping on, two things are in there, not including the ice. I'll give you a free uh, clone SOP and mother plant SOP. Somebody asked what I was drinking and you know, it turned into a game. Why not? Extreme Roots, what nutrients do you run? The last ones I was running was uh, Athena uh, Pro for the base nutrients. And then all of my additives are on top of that. Um, but I've used can of cocoa for my vegetative-based nutrients. I um, was forced to try uh, front row ag, which I didn't like. Um, I've used the Flora Series, MicroGrow Bloom for veg. Um, I've used all kinds of different things. Depends what I was working at, too. But that was, a, that was the last stuff I was running. Any input on battling a heavy thrip infestation without any heavy pesticides, beneficial bugs? You want to use beneficial bugs and you got a heavy thrip infestation? My best advice to you would be pick one of the vendors that sell predatory bugs. Get on the phone with one of their reps. Explain your situation and they will have the best answers for you when it comes to what to put out into your garden on a ongoing basis um and you know when you say heavy pesticides i'm not sure what you want to qualify as that but you could get knocked down in, uh, you know insecticidal sprays to knock the population down and make the job in some anti-feedants and things like that so that you weaken the population and then the beneficial bugs are a lot more effective but if you're just joining let us know where you're joining in from. If you haven't told us what you're smoking on, let us know what you're smoking on. If you have a question, doesn't matter. If it's exactly clone related, throw it in there. If you want to guess what I'm sipping on, it's two things, not including the ice. If you guess right, you will uh, get a free SOP, both of the SOPs that I offer on my website. I'm trying to make it fun, right? Make this a little bit interactive. If you guys like that, let's hear... Uh, See what you think. See here. B Chicano 420 says, Do you like cutting tops or bottoms and why? I like cutting tops. I like to prune my mother plant specifically so that I am growing nothing but tops. And so that my clones are consistent throughout all the trays and their consistent growth throughout every vegetative stage moving forward. So, 
I purposely grow and put all the effort and energy on the tops of my mother plants and harvest those as my clones. Let's see, Joker Joker Clone Killer says, Much love, clone coach. Been killing it lately personally. Once I add water to the bottom of my trays after day 10. Nice, man. Love to hear people crushing it. Ideal temperature inside the dome. That's going to be low to mid 80s. So call it 82 to 85. Which was it's only going to be a few degrees warmer than where your room's at. Um, so you get a little warmth from the light, a little warmth from being trapped in the dome. You gain a few points. Your room's hovering 80 degrees. You'll, so you'll be at 82 to 85 degrees. Welcome, welcome to everybody that's just hopping in. Let us know where you're joining in from. We got extraordinary gentlemen sharing some tips for that plant for that thrip issue. And I love when you guys do that, man. I love when you guys do that. Help each other out. This is a community, right? And on that note, I just launched um launched like I just set up the Patreon for Clone Coach. Um, you know, for everybody out there that's like I that's thankful for the value. They're gaining value from the tips and videos I'm making and sharing. And, you know, they're not quite ready to purchase the SOPs or it's not in their budget. Um, they want to support. I was like, look, you know, I threw up the, the, the Patreon. Real simple. I'll beef it up. It's it's just set up. Um, but there's a $5 option a month for just general, you know, support. You want to support. You gained more than $5 worth of value from what I've given and ideally, that's your, you know, an easy way to help. There's also a $20 option, which I'm going to be sharing all of my um, coaching calls, one-on-one -on -one coaching calls there. They're like half hour up to an hour long sometimes. Um, Full-length videos will be shared there for the $20 tier, along with a private community where we could dive deep into people's questions. And like you could search through all the questions and have kind of a library base of People that are really focused on just producing a lot of clones and, you know, maybe have different tiers of where you're at in clone production. So you're really gaining specific knowledge with where you're at in your nursery game. So check it out. Clone Coach on Patreon. See, we got some guesses here for the drinks. H2O, no. Water, no. Coffee, no. No. Sweet tea, no. Grey Goose Baby, no. Thank you. Sweet tea. Juice and ice. Nope. Close. Um, green tea, no, water and ice, no, Kool-Aid, no, coffee, milk, no, whiskey and Coke, no, lemon water, Kool-Aid, no, 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 orange juice and tequila, no, iced tea and lemonade, that would be something that I drink, but it's not what I'm drinking right now, gin and juice, baby, nope, lemon iced tea, nope, Arizona, nope, If anybody's wondering what's going on, trying to guess what a, what clone coach is drinking, and the right the winner gets uh, gets a free SOP, clone SOP and mother plant SOP. Cold brew milk coffee, nope. Tea and sugar, nope. Tea bag, honey in your cup, nope. Honey tea, nope. Iced coffee, nope. Mm -mm. Does that help? I don't know if that helps. I don't know if the mic is good enough on my phone. Let's see, we've got a question from Green Med Tech. You do SOP for cloning and water culture? So I have a mini guide where I just gave some general things. I don't have a full in-depth SOP for deep water culture or aeroponic cloning. Um, but go to my page, go to my profile. You could scroll over to the uh, reels and you'll see a part that says series. You could click that. Oh no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right past the reels, scree uh, slide over one more and you'll be under guides. Under guides, I'm starting to compile up, you know, mini guides, right? So there'll be one for the aeroponic cloning right there. So go go check that out. It should get you, you know, majority of your questions answered and get you some sort of guidance. And if you're still having issues, you can start tweaking certain aspects of that from there. Thrips also have seemed to grow immune to the plant therapy. Uh, well, I'm not a fan of that product, so I don't know. 
coffee and creamer, no thank you. No coffee and sugar, no coffee. Uh, I had my coffee this morning. No coffee right now. It's something fresh. One thing's out of a can. I'll make it easy for you guys. One thing's out of a can and one thing's out of, uh, you know, a bottle. So we got a question here. My clones start turning yellow after about a week. Uh-huh. The domes are burped daily. Temp in room is 79. Excuse me. And humidity is 68 to 70. PPFD is 145. You got those things right. But DJS701, if your mother plants are healthy, my biggest tip, and I know you're going to get tangible value from it, is to water with the same nutrients that your mother plants are being fed. Do that. If your mother plants are green, keep your clones green by feeding them the same thing. Got gray beard grows. What's up, man? Smoking on some platinum hash plant. Ooh. Ooh, that's some some old school. You got that old school, man? We gotta meet up and burn burn some old school. Let's see here. Let's see. I'm trying to guess what's in my cup. I'm trying to if you're if you're if you're just joining, let us know where you're joining in from too. We got people from all over the place joining. This live. Clone Coach, Celestial Lab, how you doing? Fruit Punch, Kool-Aid Tito's, nope. Roll up some Paris Larry, nice. Have you done clones with no light or outdoor? Hmm, I haven't. I haven't done clones with no light. Um, I was, uh, you know, I've heard at some point that there's benefit to having the clones in darkness for the first few days. I see more of that as a benefit during like seed germination, but not really clone rooting. Um, And I haven't done them outdoor, but outdoor will just depend if you got a good spot or not that stays pretty consistent and that's like warm enough. So you could definitely do it. Um, The only time I ever did any kind of propagation in a greenhouse was like back in when I went to community college and I took the, you know, the gardening course in a gardening lab and we, we propagated some random bushes and stuff. Um, you know, these big flats. So we had a greenhouse stuff, you know, nice, warm, humid greenhouse, but not just straight outdoors. Depends on the environment, man. Vodka Red Bull. Nope. Gray Goose orange juice. Nope. No, no alcohol. I'll make it even easier for you guys. No alcohol. Tea and a slice of lemon. No. Lemonade iced tea. They already guessed that, but nope. Water and mints, no. Have you tried Aptus? Aptus was around for a little while and then kind of faded out. I mean, that's it's a tough game to be a fertilizer or nutrient company in the cannabis space to to gain the market share to get in people's gardens. How expensive it must be to get in there for a trial. How much you have to give away so that you hopefully keep a customer for you know a few years, right? That's actually growing. Um, but Aptus kind of seemed like they kind of came and went. I'm not sure. <sighs> Sprite and lemonade, nope. Tea with sugar, nope. Tea milk, nope. Vodka 7, nope. Lemon water, nope. <sighs> tea with lemon, nope. No tea, no tea. We got a lot of tea, no, no tea. Smoking on some Boston cream pie. Nice. We got Ohio. We got Tennessee. Let us know where you're from. Michigan, Oklahoma. Arnold Palmer. Nope. That's something I do drink, so maybe next time. Cranberry lime. Nope. No alcohol. Pomegranate juice. Nope. Hello from Spain. Orchata. Nope. Ginger tea. Nope. <laughs> Green tea, lemon juice, no, no. Jack, water, no. All right, well, it's, uh, I'm, I'll start making an easy thing. Capri Sun, no. It's two things in the cup, two things. Mango juice, no. Gatorade, no. Clone water, nah. Not sipping on any clone water. 
Sounds like Crystal Light. No, I don't like that stuff. Coke and Henny, no thank you, no alcohol. Dr. Pepper, nope. Red Bull Fruit Punch. Rooting Gel. Nope. I'll let you I'll let you guys see it. Let me see. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Rooting gel, pineapple juice, nope, nope, nope. Pineapples, vodka, Red Bull, nope. Pineapple juice, rum, no. Let me just keep going here. Because after you guys seen it, you guys are probably not be guessing pineapple juice and stuff or Coke and rum. Uh, we got Michelada, nope. Bay Area, nice. You ever lit your mustache on fire? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Gotten close? Yeah, probably. Warm lips and stuff, but I don't think I've ever <laughs> lit my mustache on fire. Calgary, nice. Where you guys are where you guys are from? We got the UK. Seven and seven. No, it's no alcohol. Raider Nation. I've been doing twenty four hour lights on. Thumbs up. Keep doing it. I like doing that because it creates a consistent environment, predictable, consistent environment with no swings in my dome and my rooting process. I love that. I hate having big swings. I hate having the lights turn off um, and, and, and affecting my the, the parameters inside my dome and stuff. So 24, 24 hours lights on. I love it. Got a question. Joker clone killer. Once clones are rooted, would you do a 22 to 2 light schedule for those fully rooted clones? No. Um, at that young age and that size, keeping them 24 hours is fine. If you're going to do a lights off, just do a normal 18.6, um, you know, lights off. But I keep them pumping. And once their clones are rooted, if it's de before... Day 14, 24 hours automatically. If it's after day 14, for the first week or two, for sure 24 hours would be no problem. But if you transplant and you really want to start, you know, putting them into a vegetative cycle, um, you can do 18.6 at that point. Seltzer water, close. Prine, I don't know what that is. Prine, price juice, no. Tang, drinking tea, no. Biobiz till I'm dead. Nice. Biobiz is they came and went too, right? I mean they're still on shelves and stuff. Everybody's still around, but it's that hype, dude. It's that hype in the community that these nutrient companies gotta gotta bring. That's the tough part. Juicy juice and Kool-Aid, no. Grape juice and nice, no. Lemonade, Sprite No J. Iced coffee, HPS or LED? Well, since this is clone coach, I mean, I assume you're talking about veg or moms. Um, if it's for moms, that's a good question. HPS or LED? Hmm. I guess I would go LED because I would use less less wattage, less light, um, and it'd be easier to to work in in a clearer room with that. Nice clear spectrum versus that orange glow. Argentina. Hi, coach. Cheers. Martin Mejia. Drinking some bong water? No, thank you. Do you use Build-A-Soil products? I'm about to try living soil with avocado tech on my first run. Things are looking good. No, but I was thinking about them the other day. And I was trying, I couldn't remember their name for some, for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I want to get some like veggies going and stuff. Uh, once, you know, I can out here and, um, get some living soil stuff, get some natural things from, from build a soil. And they're putting out some good content too, man. So big ups to, uh, to build a soil. Aloe vera juice, sunrise. Nope. Cucumber water. Nope. Chocolate milk, hot cocoa. we got Arizona in the house. Water. a type of water it's a type of water for the first for the first half for the one out of two of those products coconut water no seven up nope seven seven up sprite nope it's not a soda 
I'm just, I'm, we're just gonna keep like 21 questions till we get down to exactly what it is, and I gotta give it to somebody, huh? Um, fuck it, why not? Let's do it. Kombucha seltzer. Seltzer is like a like a be considered like any sort of like carbonated water, right? But you know, no sugar kind of a deal. Is that is that correct? Club soda, sorry, ranch water. No, that ranch water sounds good though. I want to have one of those. Um, Sprite and ginger. Club soda, Seven Up, seltzer, lime juice, bubbly. Bubbly is one half Raider Nation seventy five. Bubbly is one half. We got we're halfway there. Club soda, lemon juice. Nope. Topo Chico. Hey clone doc, I'm having such a hard time getting lots of clones. Well tap daddy. I would say you devour. You should devour all of the videos that I have on this page. It's all free. You could get a lot of good tangible value out of it. If you're running a nursery and you're ready to start making some clones happen, make get your mother plants in check to have them produce as many clones per square foot. Get your clones in check to make the best clones ever. And you got to go to clonecoach.com. Use a discount code. We'll get you taken care of. Seltzer water, purple drink. No. Tears of the wrong guesses. <laughs> you guys are comedians out there. Let me skip through some of these wrong answers because I already said that one of the um, one of the ingredients is bubbly. Let me skip through all this thing. Coconut water. No. I don't know. Do, 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 do. Clone coach, I have a problem. What's up, man? What's the problem? Sparkling water, one half is, um, okay, bubbly and lemon, nope. Yeah, seltzer is a soda without the sugar. All right, nice. Mineral water and sparkling water. Aloe water. Let's see, cherry bubbly, bubbly and lemon, nope. LaCroix bubbly, nope. Now we're in the bubblies. Um, guesses. Here's a question. Can I root in cocoa instead of cubes? Yeah, you can, 100%. Get a tray that already has the cells, right? Fill that up with whatever media you want. And compact it a bit more. Moisten that. And you could absolutely root in that cocoa. I've done it. You could do it. If you're doing living soil, use the same technique. Get that living soil, compact it into a cell tray, and plug your stems into that, and it should root. No problem. Bubbly and lemonade? Nope. Close. Bubbly and strawberry? Nope. Bubbly and lime? Bubbly 7 up. Bubbly and cherry? Bubbly and jarrito? No. Bubbly and coconut water? No. Bubbly simple syrup? No. <laughs> oh, getting close though, guys. Uh, Let's see here. If you guys are just joining, we're doing a little guess what's in my cup. Uh, we already took a look at it. One half of it's bubbly. Um, and whoever gets it right before this is over, we'll get a free SOP. It should be, should be cool, right? Clone Coach, this is the fourth episode of Clone Questions Live. Doing, trying to do this, stay consistent with it every week. So I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys you know, coming out. Just share this, right? Let's get some more people, you know, joining and watching. And um, once again, if if you miss it, no problem. It's listed on my page, on my profile here, but it's also on my YouTube channel. I'm uploading the full episodes on my YouTube channel. So just go YouTube, Clone Coach, and you can watch Clone Questions Live. Every episode will be listed on there moving forward so that you miss nothing. Let's see here. Uh, bubbly iced tea. It's worse than, uh, I guess, half. Bubbly pure iced tea. More wins. Bubbly cranberry. Bubbly bottle water, champagne, and Coca Cola. Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Champagne and Coca Cola. You know, it's uh, Perrier and. Uh, Got a few people that just joined. Let us know where you're joining in from. If you're just hopping into the Clone Questions Live, um, you've missed most of it. But like I was just saying, go to my YouTube channel, search Clone Coach. You see all the full episodes that I'm uploading every week here. 
um, for the clone questions live, just in case you, you missed anything. Seen it on today's show. <laughs> Coca-Cola and champagne. Interesting. Honey and bubbly, bubbly apple cider, club bubbly, bubbly and fresca, alka sauce. <laughs> no, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Shark Bite, cool little emojis. Well, yeah, guys, I mean, this has been fun. Not too many clone questions. I mean, um, that's why we start tweaking this a little bit, you know, just make this a nice live, you know, we talk. We should really be talking more about the business of the nursery. I think that's where we got to be shifting. Um, I mean, I turned a bedroom, a spare bedroom, into my own little nursery business that, you know, started making me more than my s s corporate salary. So I jumped and I stuck with it. Um, you know, that's the reality of it, man. You know, you're making clones. You can make them for yourself, but you can make them for other people. And when you make them for other people and you provide a solid product, a consistent product, there's there's good margin in that and you could turn a you know single light of mothers you know to start paying some bills that's 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 what i see as a value in in having these sops all in check and having your mother plants producing as many clones per square foot having your clones come out the best that they can and you could provide that to other gardens dude that's that's the uh that's the value man Bubbly and grape juice, grapefruit soda and bubbly, tray or clone machine, that's easy man, tray, we got Thailand in the house, let's see, was just wondering if I should burp my domes the day after cloning into rock wool, a day in, maybe is a bit too early, but no more than two days out, you know, by the second day, sure, start burping. Um, if you're keeping your vents all the way closed, I would start burping, after, you know, probably after a day. Um, if you don't, if you don't have your vents closed all the way, then you could, you know, that one extra day in the early stage is not the worst thing in the world, but cheers, man, from, from Thailand. It's a uh, beach fish. What? Beach fish. I can't pronounce that. Um, bubbly and grapefruit juice. No. Nope. Clay Cone Cloach, I take lots of closer time, 30 or 40. I only get a few back. I got soaking water in the clone. I don't know what you said there, man. I want to be a business owner, but I am just starting. I do plan on buying your SOPs. I highly encourage that you go down the venture of being a business owner. I, it's it's a huge you know aspect of where my head's at and why I do things the way I want to do them. Um, and I encourage other people to do the same, even if it's just an extra stream of income, you know, have multiple streams of income. That's always better than just having one, especially if that one is a paycheck. If you only got a paycheck, better be a damn good paycheck. But, you know, I would love to start, I'm going to start, you know, making some more content about, you know, the business side of it and, you know, the fact that I was able to quit a job, you know, start, you know, turn a spare bedroom into, you know, a decent little thing for myself and kick off a career that I love. It's awesome. Bubbly with zero tall? No, thank you. Topo Chico and bubbly? No. Bubble and water? Let's see here. After I put them in the dome in my medium with the reading hormone on how long I should start burping the box off and should I burp the box. If you really want exactly what to do once you have clones in a tray in a dome and what to do for the next 14 days to, you know, even from day zero, the day before, um, to get the best clones ever, go to clonecoach.com and use a discount code. It'll get you every single step, what to do with the dome, what to do with the watering, what to do with the clones, how to prep them, how to protect them, how to get them there, how to... Harden them off. How to do all the adjusting, everything. Green Thumb 42. Let's see here. Do you use a beneficial bacteria soak for your cloning medium? 
Yep, absolutely do. I love, uh, you know, beneficial bacteria, beneficial fungi. Um, Pre-soak the cloning media with it and keep that going throughout the vegetator process and the mother plant process on a two-week basis. So every two weeks, I'm adding a bunch of good beneficials into my root zone. Let's see here. Wild Bill, Cody Grower, in your opinion, how many clones should two cultivators make during an eight-hour work schedule? I like that question. Now we're, now, we're, now we're starting to dive into the operations here. So if we don't factor in prep, right, if, if prep is done the day before, which I mean like the cleaning and sanitizing of the domes, the um, pre-soaking of the media, you know, loading up your trays, so on and so forth. If that's already done the day before, so when you walk in in the morning, you go straight to cutting mother stock and plugging that mother stock in the same day. If we're assuming that, then, shoot, you could probably, one person could probably do, cut about 100 clones an hour, um, increase that if they're just cutting like the raw stems and clones and then having an intermediary step where they clean up those stems um, that'll add to the time and kind of decrease how much they do per hour but they could probably cut you know 100 clones an hour so 200 clones an hour have them do that for the next five hours right that's a thousand clones for the next three hours you should be able to plug um about one two 200 to 250 clones um per hour per person so you could one person could do a tray in 10 minutes if they're money tray of 50 clones so you could do six of, you know call it four or five of those so that's one two 250 250 clones you could plug 250 clones in an hour so two people doing that's 500 clones in an hour so you really only need a couple hours to plug all that so you could probably clone a bit more um and we're only human so there's a little bit of variance there and stuff but let's call it they could clone and plug um anywhere from a thousand to maybe 1300 clones in a day uh, assuming you don't have to do the prep and assuming you don't have to do any other normal vegetative tasks like watering spraying tending to other clones things like that like if somebody's already doing that um, if they're rock stars, you know, just a killer team or the moms are just really easy to clone, that number could go up about 1,500 to 1,600 um, in, a, in a nice long work day. Hope that answered your question there, Wild Bill. That was a good one. I like that. Bubbly and 70% humidity. Head there after this. Nice tap, Daddy. Use that discount code 15K for 50 bucks off. Wrapping up here. Clone questions live. Gatorade and bubbly. Nope. Bubbly and Sprite. What's your favorite clone gel? Have you used aloe as an alternative? Have not tried aloe yet. But uh, my favorite, favorite clone gel has always been Clonex. Um, it's just been around forever, dude. You know? And it's, it's kind of interesting. It's like kind of ripe for... Um, you know, introducing new brands whatsoever, like Athena is doing really well too. Their cuts gel, you know, because there hasn't been much innovation there. There's, you know, there's a handful of rooting hormones and it's what's been there for a long time and that's about it. Bubble and SOPs. What beneficials are you feeding the mothers? Um, things like root inoculant, like uh, Terra Grow or Recharge, adding uh, biofungicides um, to that as well. So trichodermas, um, inoculate the root zone with some mycorrhizae and stuff. All the normal beneficial stuff, some sea kelp, humic acids, molasses, things like that. Hope you're doing good, man. Thank you, Zoop. Zoop me up. Is the discount code only valid till the live is over? No, it's not. Still valid. Um, it's basically going to be valid until we hit uh, 16,000 followers. So that was the code that I released when we hit 15,000 followers. So, um, no, man, you still got some time. Extraordinary gentleman. 
thank you for for participating too. You know, getting these questions out there, just participating in the chat. Um, everybody that was just letting us know where you joined in from. Um, you know, all that good stuff. We're we're hitting about an hour here, and uh, start wrapping up this chat. How do purple stems compare to hollow stems when rooting? How do pith stems compare to hollow? Um, it should have really no issue, either one, unless it's like an overly hollow, giant, huge stem. Then you may have some issue with like contaminants getting into the opening of the stem, right? It's a big open area for pathogens and stuff to get in there. So I guess it's more susceptible to any kind of issues. So that might be the difference maker when you're comparing how they root. Let's see here. Well, that's it, guys. Let's see. That's going to do it for Clone Questions Live, Episode 4. I was drinking um, bubbly and apple juice. So I don't know if anybody said that. If, it, if you did, shoot me an email. Shoot me a screenshot. But that should do it for the, for the episode, guys. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Once again, you can get full episodes of Clone Questions Live on my YouTube channel. I appreciate everybody that joined. Participate in the chat. Check out the links here. Check out the Patreon. Um, check out clonecoach.com. Use code 15K for 50 bucks off. I appreciate everybody. And uh, we'll see you next week. Have a good night.